Uh, we'll just show them like one of our proposals and then go by what we see. Well, yeah, I was going to open our presentation so that it's like. Oh, it should not too. Yeah, the, the presentation might be easier to see. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a what? Oh, sorry, it has to be more than one year. Right? Oh, is that what you're asking? Yeah, but yeah, so each study has to be conducted for one year or more. Yeah. Oh. No, there's no... um. There's no limit to when we're searching. Like, like how yeah, far the, back we're searching, I think. Yeah, uh, but the database started to like the date when we did the set was, was like September 24. Like this year, right? From that from start to September something, right? Yeah, uh, up to whenever we like our first search was. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the time frame, the search, yeah. September 16th, is that what it, what it was? The um, uh, Excel file says September 26th, search results. Okay, yeah, so then it would be the 26th. And you'll probably have to indicate that in your um, proposal, I like think. Thank you. you see my presentation? Yeah, we're gonna see everything. Okay, so basically, um, we will have, so what we did was we based it off of these three, um, these three, uh, so the study design is based off of a handbook called Cochrane Handbook for systematic reviews of interventions. And then when we report our data, it will be through two different um, guidelines as well. So everything is very like systematic and there is like instructions to exactly how we're supposed to be conducting our um, review. 
And then we also register our study through um, Prospero, which is like a like a like a online database where you have to like put in your like what your study what your study is, and then it has to get, it has to get approved, which. Uh, no, no, no. We don't need to. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm never ready. Right, so the, the meta analysis is registered on Prospel already. Sorry? So the meta analysis is registered on Pro Prospel? Yeah. Uh, well, technically, ours is registered on Prospel. So I think. Oh, it still counts? Or don't, should we I just... think it still counts. Yeah. Okay. Since we're not, we haven't published the paper yet. So okay. I think it would be the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I was just saying it. I don't think it was like too big of a deal, right? Like, no, it it was really easy because of COVID. Like, things just get approved really easily because they okay. like don't really look at other papers anymore. They look at COVID. They prioritize COVID papers, and um, they just approve everything else basically. Anyways, so you've done this. We searched through three databases, Embase, Medline, Cochrane, which me, like me and Fred did, I think. And then um, the search terms that, uh, I don't know, did I send you guys the search terms? Okay, I will send, send that as well, but so we basically had a list of search terms that we, we've had before already. It's been like, um, it's, yeah, I have, I have those in my slides and you want to include those in your slides as well. And I'll send you the updated search terms list, but um, those were already pre-made by like, um, Sandia, Sandia did like all the cardiovascular disease outcome search terms. And then like, because we're looking at glycemic index or load, we, we had those ones as well. And then we also had these other additional search terms that, um, you kind of need for like yeah. when, you, when you do systematic reviews. Yeah. So we put that all in these, like we repeat them in the three databases. They do the same. They spit out a bunch of like papers that they think we want. And we got a lot of hits. We got 11,000 something papers because we're looking at cardiovascular disease outcomes as a whole, which is what will be a lot. Um, and also mortality in general. Right? And also mortality. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what we did. And then now we're doing the primary review, um, which is basically sifting through all the papers um, that we got and then making note of the ones that we want. And we're gonna be doing that a second time as well, where we're gonna go through our full reviews and then um, sift through the ones that we actually want because we haven't really read any of the full papers. We're only reading the abstract and title. So um, for the second review, we're going through the full reviews, going through the papers, and then seeing if we need them in our uh, meta-analysis or not. Um, and once we do the second review, uh, we also will go through uh, something called the manual search, which I put down as a bullet point here as well. So the manual search is when we go through, when you code like meta-analysis or review, those papers we're also gonna look through, look at their reference list and see if we've missed any papers for our meta-analysis. So you'll see like other metas that have already been conducted, like the one that I sent you, the Lancet one by Reynolds, like they've already done the meta-analysis, we're just doing an update of the meta-analysis. So what we're doing is we're gonna look through their references, see if um, we've missed any papers in our search and then include it in our paper as well so that we're not missing anything important, like missing any important data. Um, and you're probably wondering like, why are we doing it? 
again, like, why are we doing another meta analysis when like someone else has done it? It's just because it's like every year there's going to be more and more studies like coming out. So we want to make sure that like this, the data is up to date since this topic is still controversial. Um, like, like you saw with the meta analysis by Reynolds, they didn't find any effect, but because there's more and more data, like for example, for myocardial infarction, there wasn't a lot of studies. There was like one study for, for like glycemic index. So that doesn't give us a lot of like evidence. So that's why we kind of want to do an update and see if there's any more like new data that's come out and to strengthen, like strengthen the like um, evidence that we're looking for, like the association we're looking for. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So the manual search is just for any articles that we coded as systematic review or meta-analysis? Yep, that's okay. it. Um, and you'll see like some metas probably aren't related to our topic. We don't have to go through those. The metas that are related to our topic, we'll just go through quickly with like their references. And usually we will find that like not our search doesn't capture all the like full reviews we want. And we've actually missed a few papers then we do need to go through that. And the reason why we're so like strict and like we're counting everything and we're putting down codes is because you're gonna have to um, create this consort diagram where you're we're gonna have the total amount of papers at the top. And then we have like, um, and then we'll, this is the first box here is our primary review and it's gonna be the bulk of our exclusions. And then you're gonna have to list down exactly how many um, duplicates, protocols, abstract, etc. And then we'll have like um, some amount of papers for full review. We're going to go through those and then we're going to exclude again. And then we'll have our final um, amount of studies that we want included in our study, uh, in our meta-analysis. So for the meta-analysis portion, um, you'll be creating so you're going to be using these software Redmond and Stata. Uh, Stata I don't think you'll be able to use because you do need to pay for it and um, the previous years Sandia probably uh, Sandia did that, those for us um, and I'll probably have to do it for you guys. For Redmond you can get it for free um, download it online but I'll probably send you guys that later on um, like a link to download that online. Um, so the primary analysis, have you guys heard of a forest plot? I've heard of them before. Heard of them, okay. I'm not sure if you guys have like, you guys have probably taken 284, and FS 284, and I think they kind of mentioned that and also about heterogeneity. But Redman is used to take all our studies you're gonna see that they will report like a risk ratio value or like an odds ratio value, something like that. Um, I think you guys know about what risk ratio is, um, but let me know if you don't. It basically tells us like the um, association between, like it tells us the risk of like the association we're looking at. Like for example, so, here you'll see the first column is like all the different studies that we've included that have looked at this specific association, glycemic index and all cause mortality, for example. So each study will report a risk ratio. Um, for the first one, for example, they did they got 1.06 um, and then confidence interval. And you can see that it's actually non-significant uh, because it includes one. But it basically, we're going to take all the risk ratios from each study. We're going to put it into Redmond. And then we're going to create this forest plot. And then they'll give us a overall risk ratio. It basically pulls all the data together, gives us the overall risk ratio. So we know if um, it's significant or not still, if you're looking at the overall data like that's been presented. So. For example, the overall data here 
uh, we did get a significant um, risk ratio, even though there might be some studies that did find insignificance. Um, when you put them all together, like it means kind of like that majority of the data has pointed that there is a significance. So, and it also tells us like how much increase in risk once you pull all the data it is. So 1.15 would be a 15% increase in risk of all-cause mortality when you have a high glycemic index diet compared to a low glycemic index diet. Um, and then you'll see like this overall diamond right here at the end that they'll give you. And um, that just is the like overarching, like it just shows you in a graphical sense, like, like a more visual representation of the risk ratio we'll see. And then you see that we like kind of like put them into groups, men, women, and like both. You can do that later on um, when we like, when you guys have finished like all the data analysis um, to see if there might be like differences in um, like the effect in men or in the effect of women. Because for us, we've seen that the trend is that we've seen that a lot of the times men don't have as much of a, a significant uh, association while women do, which is very weird. We don't really know the reason why, but we want to, that's why we're investigating into this. Um, any questions on the first plot? Yeah, like if you're taking NFS 301, that's like a really good course to take right now because that's exactly what we're learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions for that. Um, and then basically like also stratifying for the, um, like putting them into subgroup, that's called subgroup analysis. And that would be called, that's like your secondary analysis, um, which is, done if you have time. And I'm hoping if you guys do finish your like search and everything and finish your reviews, we'll be able to do that by the end of the year. But um, secondary analysis is good because a lot of the time you'll see this I square value at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. It's quite small, but it's I square. And that that's the heterogeneity. So um, it's basically telling you like, how like how much variance in your groups there are or in your studies there are. Um, a high heterogeneity is not something you want like that. Just means that like your, your the evidence you're presenting is not as like accurate um, or strong. So what you can do is you can stratify them like what we're doing women and men and if you can see that there's a difference between the groups, that like that can help you account for why your heterogeneity is high. So why there's differences in your groups, because there's differences in men and women, for example. So we'll show you how to find like that significance later on, but that's just like one thing that you'll have to do. You have to test for your heterogeneity as well, which is done all in five minutes, really easy. And then afterwards, after you do all your analysis, get your overall RRs for each, um, like each outcome, and for each glycemic index and load, uh, you're gonna have to do grade and um, a risk of bias assessment, which is done through um, this Newcastle Auto scale. So, which are things I will explain more again later because I don't think you'll remember, but. Sorry. Okay. Um, so yeah, glycemic. So you're gonna do great, which assesses the quality, like uh, the quality of your evidence, um, which I'll show you how to do later, but this is important because they don't want, they want your metas, like every meta basically, like you want to show like that, your evidence is strong. So if you do grade and you do these like risk of bias assessments, it just helps you like build this case that what you have presented is strong evidence. Um, so that's grade, that's um, Newcastle Auto Scale, both 
assess is like the quality of your evidence and the quality of your studies. The difference between them, the Castle Ottawa scale um, actually looks at the individual study themselves, while grade, you're looking at the overall um, overall study, like all of the evidence combined, like is that is that strong evidence or not? And for prospective forward studies, which we're looking at, we always start at a um, at low evidence. There's very low, low, moderate, and high. So we're starting at low, like RCTs, randomized control trials, they start at like moderate. This is because RCTs, they can control for all the confounding factors. Prospective cohort, you're just observing people. There's gonna be a lot of confounding factors that you can't um like you can't account for it, even if you're doing like all the statistics for it, like which is what we do with um Redmond and all that. Um but it's not gonna like there's always gonna be residual confounding variables. So that's why like prospective cohort studies are always going to be lower than RCTs because we have that extra like confounding variable factor. We can only say that there's an association and we can't say there's a causation. Um, and then after that, uh, we will do like a publication or yeah, before you do your grade and your risk of bias, you will be doing a publication bias as well. Um, that also assesses for the bias in your study. Um, I recommend you like reading into it a little bit, doing your own little research on like grade, uh, just like read up on it a little bit, maybe in the Christ in Christmas or something, or before your presentation, that'd be good, but um, not too necessary. But yeah, this all just accounts for any bias in your studies. Um, and like, if you present this data, it just strengthens whether your evidence is strong or not. Um, and then that's pretty much it. You'll be, and then with all of this data, you'll be able to write up a systematic review and meta analysis, and then hopefully get it published at the end. And yeah, so any questions? I know that's a lot. You can adjust it a bit um, because you guys, I don't know what we wrote last year, but you guys have done, you're doing your primary search. You can say you're done with your primary search. Um, like you're gonna be done by the end of like by November, mid-November. So you can say you're done with your primary search by mid-November and then base your other like dates off of that, like your other um, tasks off of that, if that makes sense. We uh we wrote it up by June or May, probably. Yeah. Um wait, is that what we wrote in the thing? I'm gonna double check. But it doesn't matter if you're not done with your systematic review and meta-analysis by the end of the year. Um they don't require you to have a full like review done, but they do want you to write up something like with your preliminary results um, by the end of the year. So it doesn't matter the dates really, but just have it like, just have it like, it, yeah, the end date doesn't really matter, but do just like base it off of that. You can say mark um, if you want for when you're gonna be done with a systematic review. But that's a little early. I don't know if you'll be able to finish it then. Any other questions? No? I think you covered everything. Okay, great.
Um, I hope that wasn't too like confusing or too much, but just please like um text me or call me. It doesn't matter. I'll if you have any questions um over the weekend, I'll be available. You can ask me questions about how to write up your proposal or whatever. And then yeah, we will try to finish our first reviews, our primary review uh, by this week, and then Fred will we'll assign you another 500 for next week and by the end of next week hopefully we'll be done with our first primary review which will be great which is like a good time and then we can start analyzing later yeah um we can end the meeting now then um thank you for coming guys thank you all right bye yeah.